morning, everyone. This is the so-and-sos of Trinity Presbyterian Church. We are having a special meeting today to record our efforts to provide masks for the protection of our community during the pandemic of COVID-19. We are still in that pandemic today, Friday, July 10th, and in fact, our governor has issued a mandate that everyone must wear masks when being out in public and this will go into place at 5 p.m. today. So this is a good time for us to share our experience with what it has been like to be in shutdown, to be in our homes, at stay-at-home order, but still continue our ministry here with the church. We'll have three parts uh, to our video. The first will be how to make a mask, and the second will be our ministries with the reflection of who we are and what our missions are. So we'll begin with the cutting of fabric. The pieces of fabric to make a mask like I'm wearing. This can be used on either side. Has delightful, don't give up, be happy, sharing is nice, help each other, play together. It's especially good for children. So you would cut it with a scissor or with the rotary cutter. people in the group, like me, who are unable, I'll pull this down, who are unable to sew or do any of these things, um, the sewing and the cutting. The other skills that, that we do are donating fabrics that we already have or that we purchase for using for this special occasion. And also we have some people who cut out items but do not do any sewing. They, they've cut out masks. They've cut out the little buddies that we sew for children. And it they really contribute to helping us and, and, and facilitating the, making faster the uh, construction of the items that we make. I, I thank the people for doing that because I can't do a, a much of anything. I've had a stroke. Did you say your name? Oh, I didn't say my name. My name is Jill Simoneshi. I'm Marty Johnson. Uh, following the cutting of the material, and the material is cut in two different sizes. For adults, the pieces are six inches by nine inches. For children, they are seven and a half inches by five inches. But the construction is the same. It's just the size of the two pieces of material that are sewn together. Once the material is cut to size, it's placed face together. Um, say that to me, girls. What is right it? Side, right, right sides. Right sides together. <laughs> and um, sewn either with elastic at the corners or ties at the corners. If you use elastic, you need a piece that is seven inches long on each side if you're using ties and the ties can be most anything that is pliable enough to make into a bow. Uh, each piece will need to be 14 inches in order to go around the back of the head. We sew the face sides together and then turn them and push out the corners and then pin 
the opening together so that it can be top stitched around to hold the, the opening closed. Then you're going to have the pieces that are flattened and ironed and look like this. Both sides are usable, whether you're making them with ties or with elastic. And once that's the construction is done by sewing it, they're pressed nice and flat because the next part can get a little tricky, but if they're nice and flat, Cheryl will show us how we can pleat them to make the double layers across our mouths and nose. Hi, my name is Cheryl Yaffe, and I'm um, happy to um, be here to show you my most favorite part of the mask. <laughs> uh, after they've been cut and then sewn right sides together and turned, uh, the mask needs to be pleated. It offers better protection that way because when you pleat it, it um, kind of doubles up the fabric and allows um, uh, the fabric to do its job to uh, block out um, any viruses that might, or spit <laughs> that might want to uh, emit from the person and that's how it's protective for other people. And um, so to, to do the pleating, we just normally, for smaller ones, this is a smaller one, it usually takes just two pleats, but for an adult size, we would put three pleats um, across the front, pin them well, and then do the final sewing around. We usually go around twice to make sure that it holds very well and, um, is, um, and will, will last, um, hopefully, quite a, a bit of time. And um, then I guess I think that's we're ready for the ironing stage then. So here I'm I'm going to iron the pleats and put it in the bag with the washing instructions. These are all made up out of cotton and they can be washed and dried. It's all in here. That's all I'm doing. Hold it. While we're using it, you just hang it up. Hang up or? Okay. That's it. Using this method, to date we have constructed and delivered 1,148 masks. They have gone out to the community and to our congregation and to organizations that help families and children. One of the problems we did have was a shortage of materials. Elastic became very scarce very quickly. And we had to use resources that are not commonly used because we used hem tape or bias tape for some of the ribbons. Uh, we had uh, ribbons that you might use to get, grab the gift. In one case, elastic was taken from a bag of new ladies' underwear. So we had to really <laughs> look into our hearts uh, to find what we needed. Fortunately, in the year before 2019, we had received a number of donations that allowed us pretty much to have the fabric here in our room for the masks, but we did need to search and order online and find ways uh, to get the elastic and the ribbon, and also much thread was donated to us. So we were in good shape that way. The next thing we want to do is talk a little bit about our major ministries, knowing that we cannot cover today every ministry that we have done, or every fundraiser we have done. They have been many. And we are going to begin with the history of the so-and-sos, uh, which will be given by Anuji Abram. And then we'll each talk a little bit about a certain ministry. Early 2000, 
there was a, at that time there was an annual benefit sale when all the church members made cookies and sold craft items. And then at that time we had a member, um, Cindy Mitchell. She used to attend the quilting group at Southeast Christian and they used to make a lot of craft items besides quilts. So she was inspired to start a similar project group in our church and we, uh, we got the blessing of a senior elder. Her name was Dori Furlong and with her blessing she's the one who came up with the name so and so. And at first we had just uh, three or four members and then uh, we, at that time we also only made prayer blankets. That was a primary um, project. And then later on we added casserole carriers, crocheted and knitted baby clothes, hats and scarves and some of the men in our group, in our church, used to make craft items, no, novelty items and all sold at the craft bazaar. And then after Cindy left, Glenna was the leader and she came up with the best buddies. She used to call it Boo Boo Babies at that time. And then we used to just distribute it to doctor's offices and you know where little children were patients. And then when uh, Sandra came on board and she's the one who found a lot of agencies who were interested in our products. So, so we have been meeting twice. We used to meet just twice a month. Now we just meet every Wednesday. And we have more members too. When I first joined the so-and-sos, that it was a short time ago, I was so impressed by the beautiful and brave work these talented and certainly loving women turned out. Their, our products ranged from prayer blankets for the needy, to pillowcases for the children at Wellstone, to flip-flops for our summer bazaar. The project that really touched my heart, though, was the burial gowns, or cocoons, the group made for stillborn babies. The impetus for this project came from a group of nurses at Clark Memorial Hospital. They explained to us that no matter how tragic the circumstances, mothers desperately wanted to hold their precious infants for a few fleeting moments. The problem was what to swaddle these babies in. Hospital issued receiving blankets were clearly not appropriate nor special for this solemn occasion. The solution was cocoons, or small wraps, made from donated wedding gowns and crafted by loving hands. We went to work making the clothing that said, this child is special in the eyes of God. Delivering these cocoons to the neonatal staff at Clark Memorial Hospital was a moving experience. The stories they told and the thanks they expressed on behalf of their patients are memories that will stay with us forever. It seems like uh, we've, we've finished one project, or, or at least master it, and um, another one presents itself. Um, this time it, it, was, um, it was time for the face mask to be um, made. I received an at random um, email about a, a, a plea for anyone who was willing to sew um, masks to please do so for Deaconess Hospital in Evansville, Indiana. And um, I, uh, I thought, you know, that was just so unusual to receive a plea um, like that. Uh, but I, you know, belong to a lot of different sewing things and get patterns from them, so um, I guess that's how they got my name. I couldn't forget that email, and so I decided to share it with Sandra, and um, she did a little investigation, um, making sure that 
it, you know, it was on the up and up and um, actually found out that there was uh, fabric to be had by these people. That, uh, we just had to ask for it. Um, well, they sent that email out to who knows how many people. And overnight, they uh, were able to fill the quota that they really needed for Deaconess and suggested that the uh, project be expanded to other organizations all over the United States. And um, so, with that in mind, um, Sandra talked to all, we discussed the idea here in the so-and-sos and decided that was something we needed to do. And so, uh, with our little group, um, we uh, have a lot of resources and that uh, donated fabrics and we had some here. The problem was with um, getting elastic at first, but we were very resourceful, as you've already heard. And um, so, uh, I will mention again that our little group has now sewn well over a hundred or a thousand masks. And um, we feel like the supplies were gathered and shared and with God's help and direction, we have achieved something we did not actually know was a goal. And we worked together while being separated, creating, again, a much needed service as well as a precious memory filled with lots of fun and laughter, a few tears, and a lot of love. I don't think I mentioned enough about people just volunteering. I can't sew. They literally cut out the fabric and gave it to us so it could get sewn because um, they couldn't do the sewing. And it, it's the extra people like that who contribute. People who sew, maybe there's not enough time to do the sewing and the cutting. And it, it's a big help. Big help. bazaar that was held every year uh, first Saturday in December and one of the things that we that's the way we finish a year usually closing down our sewing projects but then in January right after the holidays we rev back up and we use the next three months to prepare materials for Wellstone Regional Hospital and those materials include pillowcases, individually made, each one unique in its own patterns. And we also do what is formerly called the best buddies, but are now called yeah. our boo-boo babies, but are now called best buddies for the patients at Wellstone. They're just a soft, uh, fiber-filled uh, little creature, sometimes human-like in face design, other times animal-like. For, for our January through March um, sewing concerns, since 2014 to 2020, we have made 657 pillowcases. And probably twice as many best buddies for Wellstone. Our goal each year is, is approximately a hundred, but there are some years that the ladies just so, 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 and we end up counting in the final counts and are so surprised that we've not only met our goal, but it exceeded our goal by X number of items. And Prior to delivery to Wellstone, we collect our items and the work of the, the ladies in the so-and-sos and take them up into the sanctuary so that our congregation can view the items that we are asking Pastor Steve to bless prior to our delivery to Wellstone. We send them with love, with care, 
and most of all with, with hope for the receiving patients. I, I don't, the, the, the pillowcases are uh, constructed, basic construction of a, of a pillowcase design. We all follow the same measurements, designs for both the pillowcases and the body. So even though we may not be sewing here at the church each individual item, we sew in our homes and then bring and others help us get the materials cut or sewn together as in the case of the best buddies once they're stuffed and faces are put on them. So it's a kind of a multi-step process but in the months from January to March, a little different this year, but in January to March uh, we, um, we construct those items for Wellstone primarily. Now we do take up uh, some other causes if, if the need arises, but we know that that's our goal and that's kind of a nice respite after the hustle and bustle of preparing items for the Christmas sale. We, we have this down to a pat now that, you know, to a pattern where we know who cuts, who draws faces on the best buddies, who stitches things together and so forth. So that has been a, a wonderful mission that I've enjoyed being part of. However, this last year, uh, because of a long-time relationship with a former member of so-and-so's, Glenna Ogle, Tassels in Middletown called us and informed us that they were moving across the street and had many, many sample fabrics that they would be glad for us to receive. Uh, and we went to their place of business several times and loaded our cars with samples of wonderful, exquisite material. After getting this collection, we decided that this stuff was so beautiful we needed to offer it to our congregation as a way of thanks for their support in everything that we do, but then also as, you know, just kind of a, a gift from our hearts to them for their support, and we decided to have what is Cheryl Avery coined as a pillow palooza. And that became the key, you know, phrase for our work uh, with the fabrics from Tassels. And it, those fabrics were many and varied, and we made pillows for congregational members uh, that had some ideas about maybe needing a new color for our room or asking us for help in deciding a color for something that they already had in their own homes. And we had a wonderful time talking with the people in the congregation and learning a little bit about them and their situations and how they might use a piece of fabric or a pillow that we would make. And we started off cutting and sewing and binding and uh, sometimes putting tassels on them for approximately 28 one-of-a-kind pillows for families and women and friends of us, uh, friends of ours that uh, heard about it uh, during the last year, during the fall of the last year. And we kind of finished that up in time to get very heavily involved in what was going to happen for the Christmas sale. Uh, so we have not had another one, but we expect to because we still have a, a plethora of wonderful fabric and we would like to share our, our uh, stash of fabrics with, with anyone who can appreciate or can use something that we could, we could uh, design for them. So that's the Pillapalooza, and maybe once the coronavirus is, is settled down a little bit and we can uh, meet again with congregational folks, we can get some ideas for some additional pillows. So that's our Pillapalooza project that we did 2019.
something that we used to do all along. And one side used to be flannel. So anybody who was uh, sick, uh, going through some crisis in their life, received a blanket with a prayer attached to it. We print the labels and it says, Know that our love and prayers cover you. We pray that you will be healed in mind, body and spirit. Your friends at Trinity Presbyterian Church. That's a prayer blanket. I'm going to conclude our ministry part by talking about Wellstone Hospital, which for me has been very validating because I used to work at Clark Memorial Hospital as a physician, and I never knew that there was a hospital just down the road that was one of the few remaining acute mental health inpatient facilities. After checking with some of the southern Indiana hospitals to see if they might could use our best buddies, I was directed to Wellstone, as the hospitals serving ch uh, children in this area generally were well supplied by the community. I went to Wellstone, met the head nurse and the CEO, Mr. Gregory Stewart. Sandy, the head nurse, told me in 40 years of working in mental health, she had never had a volunteer come through the door asking to help them with their patient care. This because is because mental health carries such a stigma that even volunteers don't want to be associated with it. They don't have money to advertise, and many don't want their families or friends to know they have a loved one in the mental health hospital. So we saw an opportunity to bring the love of Christ there. And uh, the CEO, Mr. Stewart, was on board immediately. He is also a Presbyterian and plays the organ for his church. He has been a great instrument in helping us to have this ministry. When we go, we will meet with the nurses, have a prayer over our items. We're not allowed to go into the patient rooms because of confidentiality issues. However, our name is on all these products, and if one person might see the word Trinity Presbyterian Church, it might affect their hearts to know that the Lord is with them. They are not alone. Now, just a few more figures since 2014, we have donated 1,105 dolls, 101 prayer blankets, and the 657 pillowcases that uh, Marty mentioned, and now also 120 masks. Uh, because I meet regularly with the head nurse and with Mr. Stewart, I designed a special nurse, a special mask for the head nurse that had lingerie elastic for the ear loops so she could be glamorous on the job. <laughs> For Mr. Stewart, he goes to many meetings, and I thought, he can't wear just one of these funny masks. He has to be dignified. So I made him one that was of two pieces of fabric, both in a black, white, very sophisticated material. I got a nice thank you note written in huge letters. Thank you for my custom mask. It is very stylish. <laughs> So um, that ends our discussion of ministry, unless anyone has additional comments. Mm -hmm. The next thing, which is a very fun part, an added attraction, is a tour of our newly renovated so-and-so's room. I must at first give you some background. We were struggling with the room having insufficient number of electrical outlets. We wanted to put in more so-and-so uh, sewing machines so that we could actually work during the so-and-so meetings. Also, our shelving was a mixture of donated items that didn't fit well together 
and were kind of wobbly and difficult to work with. The lighting was the old ballast lighting, and we couldn't see. I mean, we're down here below the ground, and the shades are pulled in. We, we couldn't see. So, again, a random privilege when a foundation here in the community donated money for new electrical outlets. That was back in the fall. We brought in the church electrician, Performance Electric. They suggested these electrical outlets, which are at handicapped level. You could sit and iron if that was your particular need. They put in these drop-down electrical extension cords so that we could keep all of our extension cords up on a table and not on the floor where we would trip and fall. Performance Electric was here. They took a look at our shelving and said, ladies, we could help you get a better organization. Let me go to Lowe's with you and pick some things out. What happened was we were able to keep an old shelf And this shelf contains bins of completed work that are now ready for sales whenever our fundraisers can be restored. In this area, we have been able to store on site here and Ahmad, if you could come this way, I'd like to show just one sampling of the very many rolls of beautiful fabric that Tassels has given to us. Just take your time and pan along. Boone Fabric also was responsible for a lot of the bolts of fabric. The outpouring has been, it's Immense. overwhelming to us lots of times. And we also received fabric from a former member of ours that passed away, and she had a huge amount of items. Rosemary Hamilton. Rosemary Hamilton, yeah. And so much stuff. And on this area, we have um, specialty fabrics that we can pull from for our uh, tasks. One of the problems of the room was the lighting was so dim, it was hard to get true colors matched. So there was a need for new lighting, too. Now, at first, this project was not totally funded. We had the first startup seed money for electrical outlets. But just when we thought we couldn't go forward with new shelving, a new donation came in. And just when we thought we couldn't really put in new lighting, another donation came in. If we had not made these improvements in January, and I will tell you it was a push in January to get it all done, we would not have been poised and ready to have the organization that allowed us to get right into production of a large number of masks. By looking back on this with eyes of faith, we see that God was laying into the heart of our community what our calling would be, laying into the heart of our congregation and ourselves that in March we would be called to a higher purpose. It was all his design. We only did his bidding. And we continuously give praise to the Lord.